Get out of my way, Donald Glover. I will kill you. I don't suppose you'd like to negotiate a peaceful resolution. Negotiations are not possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam. This is HMO4 Gaming. Welcome you back to Knights of the Old Republic 2. In the last episode, we headed here to Dantooine, landed, found some snazzy new armor. Atten got our hand-me-downs because he's too busy simping for us always. In this episode, we're going to head to the Jedi Enclave sub-level because that's where uh, Administrator Adala told us that Master Rook might have been going to, I guess, find some information or check on what the mercenaries are doing. Not quite sure yet. If you're excited for that, please hit like. All right. And as we're heading over here, basically we're just going to be fighting a bunch of bugs. I do have a plan, maybe in this episode, maybe in the next, to make sure the rest of our party who uh, can learn the ways of the Force become one with the Force. Not die, but, you know, become Jedi. Um, I do have all that planned out. There are certain things that we have to do, so if you're wondering how I'm going to do that, don't worry. I have a plan, as always, hopefully. Sometimes they don't work out too well, but hey, you know, what can I do? And these things, yeah, the Kinrath, they don't really stand much of a chance against us, unfortunately. And then Kray is just going to buff us up for really no reason, but eh, it's good that she does. Shout out to her. Atten, you know, he's not even going to be able to get a chance. These things don't really drop loot, so we don't really have to worry about that too much. And we're doing, you know, almost 100 damage for each because, you know, Creatures definitely, I think, don't have any defense. At least the most basic ones don't, so we don't really have to worry about that. And uh, yeah, that's about it for all the Kinrath in the area. Just uh, some easy bug slaughter as we head to the Jedi Enclave Courtyard. And the Salvagers Camp does have a couple more quests that we can do, and this lady is a shop. Hopefully she has some good equipment, maybe some more Jedi armor for some more of our companions. You a new Salvager? Or one of those Kunda Cantina rats coming here to complain? I don't think Kunda has a cantina, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm a Salvager, technically. Well, we don't need another one. Look around this camp. We got the salvaging more than covered. I'm going to give you some advice. Turn back. There's nothing you're going to find. Uh, what do you do around here? <laughs> I've been here the longest, and I'll be here last. I buy Jedi salvage from the ruins. Slow business now, but I get by. I mean, there's only so much stuff in there. Who do you sell it to? Sometimes I sell them to visitors like yourself. Besides, that's none of your flaming business. All right. Can I see what Jedi artifacts you have for sale? You should have let me know you're a customer instead of letting me think you're some disease-ridden salvager. Jesus. Let me show you what I've got. All right. Ooh, there we go. She has another one. All right. So, unfortunately, in this version, it's fixed whenever Aspire, if they ever get the Sith Lord's um, extort content back for the Switch, will maybe, eventually... It's already past the date they were supposed to of the Q3 of 2022, so that's obviously not a thing. So Beodor cannot wear armor or robes, which is unfortunate um, because, you know, we want him to be a Jedi. Does not restrict force powers, which is why we want these, because not only does it give us bonuses, but it gives us dexterity, persuade, well, persuade charisma doesn't really affect party members, but just having a defense bonus is good, so we're going to pick that up. Robes at this point are kind of pointless. These lightsaber crystals are kind of nice. Ooh! Only because I like my purple lightsaber. Don't know if we're going to go purple. There are some newer, nicer looking colors in this game. There's like a blood orange and a white one that's pretty sweet. But we haven't found those yet. Might as well take a blue one. I don't think we need another green one. Um, and some of these lightsaber crystals I've seen in caves and stuff, so there's really nothing that great. Plus, for how much v much she wants for them, they're not kind of um, important. And all the lightsaber parts, again, we can make these ourselves. It'll be much better. Can I change party members here? Ooh, I can. Ooh. Uh, does Visa look any different? Kraya, go away for a second. I think I'd rather have Visa. Nah, eh, maybe not. I like having Kraya because she buffs us. Um... Can you wear the cool? Oh no, I don't think she can. Oh, come on. Armor proficiency light. So I need to have her have armor proficiency. Alright, so 
Oops. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I don't want to be messing up that. Stealth, security, yeah. Feet. There we go. Now she should be able to. And she gets master speed, which is good. Might as well level her up the rest. Dexterity, might as well. Just keep going what she's good at. There we go. Treat injury, because, you know, we're probably going to have her as a healer as well. I'm not really going to do much healing. I'm eventually going to get, like, master heal, because it's good if you are uh, get poisoned in battle, because it automatically heals you. But for the most part, you don't really need it. And now she can wear that, right? Yes, she can. And she is double bladed focus, so we'll either give her a double bladed lightsaber or just two lightsabers whenever we can finally get those, because right now, yeah, might as well damage physical. Attack minor plus one when unarmed? Might as well. She's kicking butt. Const uh, am I, what do I have on? I only have reflexes. Put the strength and constitution on myself. What am I doing? And give her all the reflexes, because Vista is the one that's going to be dancing off the walls and shit. Alright, let's see what she looks like. <laughs> Alright, kind of looks odd. Because her, uh, I guess you would say burka doesn't really change, but the rest of it looks pretty cool. So now we have uh, all kitted out in the nice armor. Do I want Visa with us? I mean, Kraya doesn't really do much. Plus, we're just going to be fighting a bunch of bugs. All right, Visa, you're coming with us. Might as well. Um, I think she has something else going you're on. Still lurking around here? Just go back to Kunda. You're not gonna find any Jedi artifacts. Yes, I will. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about the dead salvagers, by the way. It's a shame about them. Have any luck getting to their bodies? I figure there's about no chance you'll succeed. <laughs> I'm still looking. Yeah, well. It's funny because she never gave me if that you're quest. You're not going to listen to anybody. Maybe you can help me out. The only place that has anything is the sublevel. And only a couple of fools have gone there. And they're now dead fools. Yeah, I'd like to do the decent thing and get their bodies and put them to rest. That hole isn't a fit place for a salvager. So, if you find a couple human corpses down there, just grab their gear and their bodies. I'll pay you 500 credits for each of them. That seems unusual or genish of you. Less salvagers that are still here have to stick together. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now she gave us the quest. It's kind of weird because she, like, acted like she already gave us the quest, but actually didn't, and then gave us the quest. And that's a nice screenshot. Look at that direct shot right in the center. Damn. I remember when I first saw this, it was kind of crazy, because you spend so much time here in the first game, and now it's just a bunch of craters everywhere. Which is... Yeah, kind of interesting. Alright. So there are some tough dudes around. Obviously these dudes we can clear out relatively easily. They are kind of high level. But like I said, as long as we have our buffs on, they have no problem. Just stay the way. And now we're all buffed up. Let's just run over here. Have a quick fight with you guys. They are slowed down, but they're still they're still relatively tough. Because look at that. Look how much damage we're not even doing to this horned cat hound. Granted, we are running through them like butter, so it's nothing too bad. Yeah, nothing too much. It's the big boys that uh, give us a lot of problems. But, you know. Ooh, you hit me. But now that we've got the majority of them down... Why am I missing? Oh, probably because I my buff ran out. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. Now I can get behind. And now it's three on one. Damn, Visa's almost dead. Man, even even with like that armor and stuff, that's crazy. You know what? I also just remembered that Visa needs uh, weapon finesse. Basically, the stat that would use her dexterity instead of her strength for. Um, hit chance. I need to remember to get that. That is a very good to get. Also, this is pretty much the end game, caved in door. This, you know, as you remember, leads right into the Jedi Council chamber. The door to the upper level of the Enclave won't open. Judging by the damage to the exterior, it is completely caved in. Alright, well, I'm sure uh, we'll be coming back to that 
way later in the game but just so you know what it says there if you go there a little bit earlier and as we go over here that wasn't really used for anything in the first game it's now the Jedi sub level the enclave sub level and these random dudes just standing there waiting for us to come by who are we missing we're one off we're missing Joran I don't see Joran that runt of a cat hound he's the one with the backpack did anybody grab anything from the room anybody as we come over here with us three Jedi's over want? here well I'm kind of a Jedi Atten's kind of like just using the force and Visa's kind of just here to look at us I guess um, heading to the ruins of the Enclave you won't find anything there except on the lowest sub level and there you'll only find death Legrex are everywhere uh, what happened? I managed to get this sad lot of salvagers to work together. Then we get two rooms into the sub-level, and we get swarmed by Legrex. And even then we fight our way out. But of course, the only one that managed to grab the salvage is still in there. I don't even know why I bothered. Are you gonna go back for him? Are you kidding? Of course we aren't. He's on his own. I only wish he didn't have the salvage on him. Now, if you don't mind, we're going someplace you can't eavesdrop on us. And get down to our business. Oh, I'm sure we'll be back over there to eavesdrop all on you. Alright, and here's the sub-level. Now, there is some stuff we can do to get a bunch of loot that we're probably going to do because we're not lacking in light side points. So, uh, we might be doing some sketchy stuff today, but that's alright. It's all about getting beefed up and some equipment and all that good stuff. Also, Visas, you got destroyed. So, I think... Just for now, I just wanted to see you with the equipment on. We're going to have Kraya come back. <laughs> Alright. And I guess that just completes the quest to find our way here into the sub-level. Now, the sub-level is nothing too crazy. It's just going to be a lot of uh, cutting our way through some bugs and looting the place. Example A, bugs. Now, they talk big about these things. They are not tough at all. <laughs> I think this is uh, the first planet the game expects you to come, I think. Because, yeah, they're they're not any tougher than any of the Kinrath around, so... We're just basically going to be cutting these guys through butter, looking around the area. Kray is just going to buff the hell out of us. And yeah, we won't have any issues. Yeah, they do have a small regen, which kind of makes them tough. But again, they don't have any armor or any kind of defense, so they don't really do much. And here's a locked door. Someone out there? Anybody? Help! Legrix are everywhere! Help me! I'm trapped in here! Now, if we already didn't have our lightsaber, this would be an easy way to get a lightsaber park. You just blast open the door, kill him, and there you go, there's a part. But we already have our lightsaber, and I'd rather uh, get him alive just so... Uh, He's able to sell us some stuff later because he will give us the lightsaber parts that we could just get from killing him. But let's not do that. Yes, yes, I am. I locked the door in here. I thought I was going to be leg wreck compost. Did you take care of him, stranger? I mean, I took care of him from the door. Uh, the legrets in the area are dead. Doesn't say lie, but it is a lie. That's weird. There are some. Please take care of them. I can't stand much more of this. If you do manage to clear a path, please come back. Alright, yeah, and we'll worry about that in time. So, like I said, what we're really trying to do is making our way down to the Jedi Archive here, down here. Um, that's on the other side of the area. But, the only thing that's keeping us is these bugs. There's really nothing else down here. There's no, like, Dark Jedi or anybody the sith kind of just came did what they did and basically left the place and here's one of the salvagers bodies I'm just gotta kill this guy first Ooh, you dodged that good job come on guys some of them yeah deadly legric so that was one of the more tougher ones and here's one of the dead bodies that the salvagers wanted us to get dead salvager body where we're keeping this body no idea and this is only an average frag mine so i should still be able to pick this up yep and that gives me a level up and there you go there's an example of do not sleep on uh might as well start throwing some stuff in stealth maybe we'll do some funny stuff in the end 
Because seeing as though our stats are starting to get very, very good. Also, I just noticed that my demolitions is terrible. Wait a minute. I have one in demolition? Since when? Huh. Did I always have that? I could have swore that we had pretty decent demolition. Alright. Well, that's interesting. Oh, it's security that I'm good at. It's amazing how I was able to pick up that mine with one demolition. I must have a bunch of buffs going on. But anyway, yeah, we can, uh, you can use your lightsaber to open these doors and that's no problem. When I was a kid, I used to do that because it's cool. I got my lightsaber. I got instant access. But yeah, now if you have high enough security, you want to do that because XP is, you saw, I got a level up from picking up a mine. <laughs> so it's always good to do all that min-maxing. Even at this point in the game, it's really minuscule amount of XP, but, you know, might as well do it. And like I said, there's not really much lore going on around here, so... I'm just gonna clean up the area, clean up some leg ricks. There are some computer stuff that I can blow up some consoles to gain access to some, uh... Salvage and stuff, but again, this is pretty much primarily what we're gonna be doing. So I'll meet you once we're ready to go into uh, the Jedi Archive of the sublevel. As I am reassembling my droid army, I shall take over the Jedi Enclave with my army of protocol droids that will meet and greet everybody. I don't think there's really anything to this. I just thought it was hilarious and I'm just going to make sure to... Have all these dudes be reactivated and walk around, seeing as though I have all the computer spikes and repair parts in the world. So now there's just a bunch of fancy droids around. I think the Lagrix will attack them, which is kind of hilarious. And the worker log just talks about the droids and how crappy they are and they blow up and all that fun stuff. I think in the restored content, if you blow up these um, terminals, there's actually like a hidden cache and you get some stuff. But for our purposes, not so much. Unfortunately, there's not really much going on. If you blow it up, it just blows up people. But I did want to show off. You already know what time it is. Just like our first, uh... Ooh, we actually have some of these. Hey, let's put some regeneration. Ooh, what else do we have? Strength, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, strength, constitution. Damn, this is just a plus to a bunch of stuff. But we're going to put some constitution and strength. And I guess why not? It won't hurt. Atten's got some upgrades too, so I might as well just throw some stuff in for him. Uh, Yeah, might as well. Put some stuff into him. And there we go. Got my purple lightsaber to go along with my blue outfit. I like the, cla the nice colors. Rocket and shield. Alright, I just wanted to show that. Let's continue our explanation and hopefully none of my droids get killed by the Lagrix. Which they probably will. I think that's what the point of them are. They're not going to like clear out the place or anything, but it's just fun to have protocol droids running around. Oh no, you found a will on the Salvager that will state that all the possessions are to be left to the other dead Salvagers you found. Delar would no doubt be interested in getting her hands on the Salvager's body in the will. Uh... Yeah, well, the data pad has the will of the dead salvager. It is badly misspelled. It used to indicate that if there, he died, his possessions would go to the other salvagers that ventured in the sub level with him. Now it says that all his possessions should go to you. <laughs> it's fine. We're protecting the galaxy. And those salvagers weren't very nice to me. So screw them. I want all this stuff. All right. We're almost done clearing out the place. Not really much good loot going on, unfortunately, so again, I think this is the last of the Lagrix. We'll probably let What's-His-Face out first before we uh, venture on any further, so hang tight for that. All right, as you join me back, right in front of the door of uh, Mr. Joron, everything's cleaned out, so uh, hey, Joron, you're all good. Is that you? I thought I heard something. Is it safe yet? Uh, the Lagerts in the area are dead. You must be fierce with a blaster, then. Hey, give me a moment. I sort of jam the door a bit. Just don't leave. Hello, old man. Thanks Jesus for saving looking me. guy. I thought those Lagerts had me for sure. 
Uh, you sold sewer a defective moisturizer vapor, by the way. Oh, uh, what do I know about moisture vaporators? Well, I, I told him I wasn't sure if it would work or not. Hey, buddy, I've played enough card games to know a bluff when I see one. Hey, uh, can we please talk about this later we're, when we're not in danger of being eaten by leg Rex? No, we'll talk about it now. Sorry, I gotta go. You can meet me in the salvager camp. You will not run away from me. Die then, coward. <laughs> no, let him go. Alright, and he runs away and we'll meet up with him later. And as you can see, he uh, stole all the stuff. At least he had a nice little bed in here to relax. Alright, and let's head to where we actually uh, came here for. The Jedi Archive down here in the Enclave sublevel. As he bows to us. What a gentleman. Uh, yeah, there we go. Thanks for the polite bow. You must be a gentleman. I am an historian and scientist working for the Republic. Doesn't even acknowledge it. I'm certain my contemporaries would judge me more a historian than scientist. Uh, what are you doing here? Like you. Behind I a locked door. some trace of the Jedi. I had heard mention that one of the Jedi Masters had gone there, but I found no trace of them. I mean, there's, uh, not the only reason. Also, there's a bunch of Jed bodies behind you, by the way, dude. The other reason was the ruins of the Jedi Enclave. And once I arrived, I felt it was necessary to stay, to protect what was left. Left? Much had been taken from the Enclave, both by raiders and others. I wished to preserve what I could. What others? Many artifacts were taken from the Enclave, but these thefts... They had to have been done by someone who knew the Enclave well. I suspect the Jedi themselves took the holocrons and records, but I do not know why. You mentioned holocrons. Someone has been taking holocrons from sites across the galaxy. It was almost as if someone does not want their knowledge used to find the Jedi. The situation on Dantooine is echoed in other places in the galaxy. Raiders, smugglers, all seek to plunder what remains of the Jedi, and even the Sith. More so than the Jedi themselves, I fear the loss of their history. And why is that? Much has been forgotten in recent wars, and I fear that greater troubles shall stem from that loss of knowledge in the future. The destruction of the Academy on Osus near the Kron Drift in the Sith War, the teachings of Master Arca, the adventures of Jolie Bindo on the Rimward hey, missions. Jolie. All of these things are in danger of being lost forever. What else would you like to know? Uh, you, do you know what happened to the Jedi? No. It is something of a mystery why they would exile themselves as they have. It is not the way of the Jedi to vanish in such a way. Especially when the Republic is in need of them. I fear that there is something else at work. Something that we cannot see. Then again, perhaps the Jedi are hiding simply because so many people hate them these days. Why do you think people hate the Jedi? It is difficult sometimes for the Jedi to see such things, since much of it is rooted in human nature, and the Jedi are often removed from events of daily life, insulated. But the reason the Jedi Civil War was named such was because few in the galaxy can recognize the difference between the Sith and the Jedi. To them, they are both Jedi, with different philosophies. Very true, but Jedi have to protect the galaxy for centuries. They seek peace. Often through sacrifice. Not always. Jedi often fall. They cause much harm on Onderon, for example, in the name of peace and protection. Uleg Keldroma and Exar Kun, the two Dark Lords during the Sith War many decades ago, were once Jedi Knights, as were Revan and Malak. It is perhaps more amazing that some still trust Jedi after many have fallen and endangered the galaxy. It is also proof that a single Force wielder can change the face of the galaxy. And that is a frightening thing indeed. I also really wish they uh, expanded upon Ula Keldroma and Exar Kun in some, like, maybe a book or something, but I guess we'll never get that. Do you hate the Jedi? Hate? No. I do not hate them. Kind of like what they did with Dark Bane. Without answers. Jedi are not supposed to be like the rest of us. They are supposed to see a higher purpose in all things. And... They are supposed to train students responsibly and well, so mistakes of the past are not repeated. Yet all I saw was ignorance and arrogance, and what those seeds created in the Republic. It is difficult to follow the Jedi Code when so few others have, but you know this. What do you mean? 
Many Jedi defied the Order during the Mandalorian Wars, and it paved the way for the Jedi Civil War. I was one of those Jedi. I must accept part of the responsibility. There is no blame. All must accept. But, at its core, one must wonder if it was the failure of the Jedi teachings or the teachers themselves. Many of the Jedi Council trained Exar Kun, Ulik, Revan, and Malak. How could they not see the danger they posed? And if they could not, perhaps there was some essential part of their teachings that was flawed. Something beyond the Jedi code that they were missing. Revan and Malak would have received the same teaching as I did. I am not certain you understand what happened with Revan. Do you wish me to explain? Yeah, sure. Let's see if the game is actually going to tell us the actual truth. Revan was captured in the middle of the Jedi Civil War. Oh no, it's just going to recant the first game stuff. His apprentice, Malak, who turned on him. Revan was brought before the Jedi Council and put on trial. You must understand that the situation was desperate. And the Jedi needed to know how Revan had amassed the forces arrayed against them. As I understand it, they were able to convince Revan to have a change of heart. Revan helped the Republic defeat Malak. Perhaps in his conversation with the Jedi Masters, they were able to convince him of the rightness of their actions. Uh, not really. They kind of just uh, knocked him out and brainwashed him, and then he kind of uh, was a good guy, did some shady stuff on occasion, but then ultimately saved the galaxy and found some snazzy clothes on a dark side ship made by a bunch of bug-eyed uh, creatures. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm boring you. Uh, do you know who trained Revan, by the way? Revan had many masters. Zar, Dorak, Master K, before K left for the wars. Towards the end of his training, kind of really wish they he expanded on Master K. Techniques. It is said that he returned to his first master at the end of his training, in order to learn how he might best leave the Order. <clears throat> mm. uh, I think we uh, might know who that is. Uh, she might be standing behind us. Uh, Revan and Malak would have received the same training. Now that's just going around. Other questions? What else would you like to know? You mentioned holocrons. Why do you work for the Republic? Why do you work for the Republic? I'm trying to save the Republic. Dantooine and the Jedi Order are instrumental to that effort. Despite the troubles of the Jedi Civil War, there are those among the Republic who still favor the Jedi and wish them to return. And there are admirals within the fleet who recognize that the Jedi must be found if the Republic is to hold together. Yet as long as Onderon remains within the Republic and the efforts on Tilo succeed, that is all that matters. Admirals in the Republic, he's kind of talking about Karth. If you're a male, he basically goes back and talks to one of those admirals in the cutscene. Admiral, I kind of forget what his name is. Um, it's blanking me. I'm sure I'll remember it eventually, but why Telos and Onderon? We kind of already know this because um, Atris kind of told us and everybody else around that we talked to told us that Telos is basically a staging ground and if Telos um, is good, then the Republic will say, oh, this is a good idea, and then they'll continue to help. But if they fail, well, not so much. The Republic is fragile right now. Telos is important because its success will determine whether or not the other dead worlds receive the and same reconstruction efforts. If Telos is rebuilt and made habitable again, it will affect a string of worlds along the rim. And Onderon? Onderon, strangely enough, was unaffected by the Jedi Civil War. It's almost as if Revan didn't want to attack it. Its resources and position on the rim make it a vital supply line and guard post against outer rim attacks. Also, it's the only world in the Republic still capable of seeding ecosystems into other dead worlds. Onderon's wildlife is some of the most aggressive in the known galaxy. Merely placing some of those beasts on target worlds will guarantee their habitation for years to come. Why are the Jedi Order so important? The Jedi are a symbol. As much damage as their reputation took during the Sith War and the Jedi Civil War, there are still many who they serve as an example. Plus, there have been times in the past where a single Jedi has been enough to change the face of a world. Or a galaxy. I suppose I still believe that might be possible. Despite the betrayal of many of the Jedi against the Republic, I must concede that as figureheads, they do serve a vital role. Okay. What else would you like? Do we have anything else? You look familiar to me, by the way. I imagine in your travels of the galaxy, you've seen. Oh, many he's just being modest. Tend to blur <laughs> together after a time. What else would you like to know? 
Uh, that's about it. I do not know if you are aware of okay, how no, he's still telling the us about the Republic. The moment. Its influence is stretched thin, and it grows weaker with time. What happened? The Jedi Civil War brought much suffering to the galaxy, and the forces that Malak and Revan amassed against us seemed limitless. Many worlds were destroyed, trade routes disrupted, and the Republic fleet was almost decimated. It was almost the end. But at that last year, the year before Revan vanished, Revan's assault on the Republic stopped. No one knows why. But it was all that saved the Republic. The fleet the Sith had amassed was no more, and the remaining Sith turned on each other, destroying the Academy on Korriban. It did not matter. Revan had already won. Uh, they turned on each other all right, but uh, I think we might have uh, had a hand in that. Well, Revan did, by the way. Uh, what do you mean? The war was costly, and it shattered the Republic. In time, the Republic might recover. But if a threat strikes now, if certain key worlds are not held, then the Republic will collapse. What else would you like to know? All right. And I think this might be just repeating. Someone has been telling the yeah, situation. That's already the that's just repeating. All right, I'll be going now. Before you go, I had a question for you. You came to Dantooine in search of Jedi. Why? Because I have a force bond. No. To get some answers, the Sith are awake in the galaxy, and I'm going to need their help to stop them. If the Sith are rising in the galaxy again, then it is strange the Jedi would not be there to meet them, and that we have not seen more evidence of the Sith. Trust me, the Sith are out there. They've been hounding me since Paragus. No, I believe you. I merely find such subtleties among the Sith to be strange. They have been known to practice deception, but in the histories, since the time of the Dark Lords Kuhn and Keldroma, and Revan and Malak, such subtleties have been rare. In any case, it seems to me like our goals are compatible. If you would have me, I can apply my knowledge and skills to helping you find the answers you seek. Look, we're already full up. <laughs> we don't need anyone else. We travel light. Uh, we need all the help we can get, and he seems capable. And he is, actually. Oh wait, yeah, we have Disciple at Ensure. Infilis gained Disciple. And, uh... He's actually kind of hilarious when it comes to getting him to uh, be a Jedi because uh, it's kind of like Jedi speed dating that we're just going to talk to him and we're just going to make him a Jedi before we even move anywhere else. There is something I have observed, and now I feel I must say it. I have found your presence to be inspiring. We haven't gone anywhere. With you literally just walked force, behind me and I spoke you to, to you. <laughs> and throughout the dangers we face, you remain calm and focused. What are you talking about we? We didn't go anywhere yet. You're right, I have never felt better. I understand now why others followed you to war. Perhaps that is what leadership is. And it is something I have seen in only a few during my travels. In any event, it has been some time since I traveled with a Jedi, nor one so firmly upon the path. I wanted to thank you. I fear the stories that were spoken of you have misrepresented you. And if I have the opportunity, I shall reverse them whenever they arise. I thank you for your kind words, but they are not necessary. I have no time for your condescension. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're not necessary, though. Very well. Then I shall keep my favorable opinions to myself. Okay. Forgive me, but there is something I must ask. In my study of the Jedi histories and the more contemporary records, I have heard tales of a Jedi who was exiled. You are that Jedi. But the records are somewhat evasive on why this was done. I wanted to discuss why you chose to leave the Jedi Order and accept exile. I left to protect the innocent of the Outer Rim. Battle called and I answered. The Jedi held no truth to me. Only war did. Yeah, I left to protect the innocent of the Outer Rim. I see. And because you went to war, they cast you out? Yeah, that is what they told me at the trial anyway. Do you have a record of this trial? Yeah. <laughs> T3, yeah, the droid has a hollow recording of it. Yeah, T3 and 4 has a copy of it. Perhaps I shall examine it when I get the chance. With your permission. Yeah, you're free to do whatever. Go ahead, do. I trust you. Go ahead. I appreciate your trust. Thank you. Very well. And there's influence gain, and somehow he, uh, used his flash powers and got to the ship and reviewed it, and now he's ready to talk to us about it. I have studied the hollow record of your trial. <laughs> 
I am unsure what to make How of he did that, I, I have no idea. that I was searching for some meaning beyond the records. A reason for why one would leave the Order. I did not leave the Order, I was exiles. Why? Did you know that exile is a rare sentence? It is not really something that the Order can enforce. Believe it or not, it was really your choice. You saw the record, there was no choice, it was a- And why would I choose such a thing? You weren't there. And why would I choose such a thing? I do not know. That is a question best answered by yourself. But it is you who made the choice to turn away, not them. I still don't believe it. Is that it is your theory? Clutch to it all you want? I'm not certain I do either, but it is something worth considering. Are you sure I don't know you? You look familiar more so than before. You are correct. I am afraid there, I have now not he's going to tell us with you concerning my because past. we got more if influence I look with familiar, them. It is because we have met before at the Enclave on Dantooine many years ago. As on Coruscant, force sensitive children are taken to Dantooine as well. Though it is done rarely and only with those they believe are destined to become Jedi Knights, it is the secret nature of the place. If you are not chosen by a master when you have come of age, however, then the path of the Jedi is denied to you. I met you on Dantooine, long ago, briefly. You taught us how to move within the Force and see it flow within others. How to see it in the behaviors of others and use that sight to achieve truth. It is difficult to explain the difference between you and Master Vruk, but I think it is because he was knowledgeable, but not a leader, not a mentor. You were different. We could all feel it. And I knew that if I were to have a master, I would want it to be you. And then you went to war. Many Jedi went to war, and the Jedi Masters proclaimed that you were Jedi no longer. Atris, the mistress of the Archives, was first among them. I knew at that moment <laughs> what a bee. that if you would no longer be a Jedi, then you must be correct. I realized I did not want to be a Jedi. Instead, I wished to follow your path, and in any event... There was no one to train me, even if I wished it. They all went to war, as I grew past the age of acceptance. But the Force, the path of a Jedi, you abandoned it? So you turned away from the Jedi, the Force, because of me? It is possible to forget the Force, you know. If you have not felt it strongly enough, then there is little to miss. But I never felt the Force as strongly as I did when I was with you. And so I decided to serve the Republic, study the Jedi teachings, gather them, perhaps. It was important to me to understand the Jedi now that they were gone. I felt some part of you should be preserved, so that your lessons would not be lost. I'm sorry that my leaving for war had such a consequences on your future. Perhaps. I still harbor doubts about the path I walked. I could train you to feel the Force again, by the way. I think you are right. It is time. And just like that, <laughs> he's already a Jedi. Strong in the Force again. Which that is kind is of interesting. All. You have achieved a center in the chaos around us, and I have felt it, my master. The one intended for me, left to fight in the Mandalorian Wars. Now she has returned, and I ask her now if she will train me in the ways of the Force. You got it. The one who was to be my master <laughs> was lost at Malachor V. I want you to teach me the ways of the Force, to become a Jedi Knight, what I meant to be. Then let us meditate and open ourselves to the Force. Imagine the initial teachings of the Jedi. Your first steps within the Enclave that we are still currently in. Remember the wind among the plains of Dantooine. The feel of life around you. Blank stare. Think of what you felt when our paths crossed again. But not in that way. Please keep it to the light side. And at last, see the galaxy through the force. The disciple has taken his first steps on the path of the Jedi Consular. He will grow in abilities as he travels with you and learn what to know of the force. And just like that, disciple can be a Jedi because badass. We'll worry about his level ups in f future, because right now he's, like, what, level 6? And he can just become a Jedi, and that's a lot of levels right now. And uh, he can just go back to the ship. Oh, and we can't change the party at this time. Cool. Um, He needs some kind of armor right now. 
Well, he could put that on just so he has some, uh, has some, uh, oomph to him. And we'll give him, uh, we'll give him one of the death blade. Oh god, that's terrible. He's got no ability. Nine. Well, he can do that for now. We'll, we'll spec him out once we actually get back to the ship in time. But for right now, three dead mercenaries lie here, accompanied by signs of combat. Each of the mercenaries bears evidence that they were killed by a lightsaber. Yo, look at that dude's eyes. Crazy. And all right, dead mercenaries. Targeting visor, data pad, Azul's orders. This data pad contains orders from Azgul, the leader of the mercenaries on Dantooine. Rook has wandered into the Jedi Enclave. You will be taken full squat and capture the Jedi alive. Bring him to our nook in the Catherine Caves to await transport to Nar Shaddaa. He will fetch a fine bounty. Oh no, Master Rook is in trouble. Alright, so we need to get out of here, head to Kunda, see if they have any flavor text, collect our <coughs> award for, uh, because the salvagers left everything to us. And then we gotta head over to the Crystal Cave to save Master Vrook. Alright, and as we reach the exit, uh, there seems to be a roadblock of people in our way. Oh no! Atten, make sure you what up, we're up, because we're heading into combat. Braved the perils of the sublevel, yes. Many stories and artifacts in your possession. This Not really. <laughs> is fortuitous for myself and associates. For now, not only do I get rich salvage, but an even richer bounty. Do not be making this difficult. Your death can be quite painless. Get out of my way, Donald Glover. I will kill you. I don't suppose you'd like to negotiate a peaceful resolution. Negotiations are not possible. A deal has been made with anxious people. People you do not cross. And now, Jedi, we shall fight. Okay. But you shall die to my powers. You're a bunch of weak fools. <laughs> All right, well, yep, they uh, didn't really stand much of a chance. If you guys are all just going to going into each other basically yeah when they're that close you just force um even force lightning even force storm whatever they didn't really stand a chance all right and let's head over to the salvagers camp to wrap up that quest as we head on to kuna and all right we're here back at the salvagers camp and uh we can turn in those dead bodies that we place somewhere on our person what? who is that oh it's you you go down into the sub levels yet or did you suddenly develop some sense uh, no, I'd like to talk to you about the dead bodies. It's a shame about them. Have any luck getting to their bodies? I figure there's about no chance you'll succeed, but the reward is still open. Yeah, here you go. You have? You managed to find them down there? You're tougher than you look. I have 1,000 credits for their bodies and their personal effects. Uh, here you go. You've proven very helpful. <laughs> uh, I have something I have to do. Come back if you want to talk again. Okay, she gives us the money. What she actually wants to do is go and uh, hand in that bounty, but uh, I think she's going to be very, very uh, disappointed. I feel much better now, thanks to you. I don't think I thank you properly down there. I was pretty shaken. I found a few Jedi artifacts down in the sublevels. I was planning on selling them to Darala, but I'll sell them to you if you want them instead. Uh, I also need the dude's moisture evaporators, by the way. Oh, that again? I sold Sulru the moisture evaporator in the same condition it was in when I found it. That is not the whole truth. All right. Darala got there before me, and she just took the modulator because she was loaded down with the other stuff that Sulru abandoned. But after I sold the farmer back his moisture evaporator, I won the modulator from Darala in a game of stones. Don't you think it's despicable to make someone buy back their own possession from you? Finders keepers. I've got a permit that allows me to salvage anything on the Enclave grounds. I didn't make up the laws here, but I abide by them all the same. 
I don't care, just give him back the modulator. You're a bit demanding, aren't you? If you want the modulator, I'll sell it to you for 500 credits. The same price I offered to Suluru. Yeah, well, guess what? I saved your life and you owe me better than that. All right. Just for you. Look at this guy. The price in half. Back again. Can I not threaten him? Oh, that All right. I want to threaten him. Finders keepers. You're a bit there we go. Schuler is a former soldier, you know. He hinted that he might try and make matters into his own hands. Okay. I don't want any more trouble. Here's yeah. Modulator. Yeah, so don't do that. Back again, huh? But it's nice to see. Uh how much do you want for the Jedi artifacts? I found three things down there. One some sort of crystal and the others look like lightsaber parts. If you give me a thousand credits. Thousand credits? Can Doesn't I see them work first? That way. Maybe. Alright, here you go. <laughs> Might as well. You're doing business with you. Come back, Kenny. Lightsaber. Ooh, he actually gives us a lightsaber. Improved beam gem lens and crystal cyan. <gasps> cyan is with a cool blue color. Hey, I like that color. Also, Atten, guess what? You can finally get yourself your own lightsaber that we're going to have to pimp out. But there we go. Our boy's got a lightsaber. And I think with that... We're going to wrap up with today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit like, hit subscribe, and do all those things on down below. But until next time, I have been Adam. This has been HMO4Gaming. And this has been Knights of the Old Republic 2. Thank you very much. Have yourselves a great day.